Ooh, what's going on people, it's your man the YB, back once again, big shout out to my doggy, Arthur DS1 and Porter for coming through and boosting up the coin, so we got another leak for you man, right now, regarding Maximus Danelius de Bois Stronimer versus Anthony, orderly Thany, Harrison <laughs> This cat here is the UK's Team GB gold medalist reincarnate of orderly Harrison, no doubt. Let me see if I got it up. I've just been watching Harrison, <laughs> Harrison versus David Hay, and David Hay is no good. He's not no good. Yeah, hey, David Hay in old school. He's rubbish. Tony Ballou, 175 pounds, soaking wet. Tony Ballou. <laughs> you punched Big Doe up, man. David Hayes, no good. He couldn't fight. He couldn't fight. Again, it's the new school versus the old school people. Do you understand that? The new school versus the old school. Who was it? Tony Thompson or Carl Thompson? Whoever it was, some sort of Thompson. Turned his young, pretty looking, light skinned ass over and sent him packing. That's what happened to Big Toe Hay when he got in there with old school. Yeah? David Hayes, new school, like Vlad. What's that fight? Vlad versus Hay. Two faffers in there doing nothing. <laughs> Having a look. I don't want to watch that crap, so forget about Big Toe Hay. <laughs> forget about Big Toe Hay. <laughs> anyway, I've digressed, but listen. We've got the leak tapes right now. This shows you the contrast between Dubois and AJ's corner. We actually get a first glimpse into Dubois' corner, so here we go. Look, you see that bit there? It's annoying, really. I can't replay the specific points. <laughs> yeah, Danny D. I'm Phil. No word of a lie. In the last two weeks, I've put mad gains on. That's the truth, people. Yeah, Danny D's just no homo. No, did he? Yeah. Pause. He's filled me full of testosterone. That's the bottom line. <laughs> Are you not in it? No corny Johnson Lucas aid for the kids bullshit. Oh, I want to say hello to the kids. Fuck the kids. We're totally ferocious. Yeah, if they're not my kids, fuck them. That's what the line would say. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm paying 20 bucks to watch. Do you know, I'm not paying 20 bucks to watch Mahatma Gandhi and who's another guy? Um, Nelson Mandela sit there talking about kids. Eat. Eat his kids. Mike told you these bar. Mike was corny. He didn't really want to fight either, if I'm honest. Mike was an on-top fighter. Mike Tyson, we can say he fell off. We can say he got old or cussed died. But he was an on-top fighter. He never really wanted to get stuck in a scrap. Mike didn't. No. But forget about Mike. But his bars were true. Yeah? Mike didn't really want to eat Lennox's kids. But that's the... That's the way to think, people. These are primal, primitive, Nifanderalian ways of thinking, Promethean ways of thinking. It's his bloodline or mine. It's got to be mine every time. That's what Danny D was on. Just rub John Stewart all the way out. The whole of John Stewart's legacy, gone. You sick went life and death with John Stewart. That's what happened, right? You sick went two times life and death, 50 50 on points. Couldn't hurt John Stewart once. Couldn't do nothing. You can say, oh, well, he rocked John Stewart. John Stewart was on his feet. Danny D separated the 260 pound knockoff Harris Sunua. Yeah, Anthony, Anthony Thony. <laughs> what was it again? <laughs> Orderly Thony, Harris Sunua. Separated that man, big old man too, from his consciousness. And you hear this cat here now. <sighs> His dad said to him, Don't look at me, Dan. Finish the job. And this sends 
shivers down my spine. I've talked about this film before. It's called Unleashed. You, you got honestly, it's worth watching. It's a sick film. It's a proper sick film, and it's a it's a bit like Snatch to some extent. It's imagine Snatch but with Jet Li in. It's got them same kind of undertones, and this Jet Li cat. He's been, he was taken from some Vietnamese village and trained under these gangsters. You can see here, and he's on he's on go. He's on go. He just want to he want to fight. You know what I'm saying? He looking to get stuck in. He looking to eat. He looking to put food in his table. And the reason I bring that up is, watching this here, I mean Daniel Dubois' dad says, "Don't look at me. Finish the job." I swear to God, man, he's under some. <laughs> it's the same kind of thing here. This guy would this cat here. I forgot what it was. What would he do? Blow a whistle? He'd do something. It just set the guy off. He'd do something. I'm not sure what it was. And and this fighting machine, Jet Li, would just get stuck in. Yeah. Let me see if I can play. I don't. Mm, can I play some of it? Do you think? Let's see if we've got any highlights here. But again, seriously, watch that film. You need to, people, if you're looking to seriously follow the career of Daniel Dubois, you need to watch the film Unleashed. That's the bottom line, because that's what we're witnessing now. Daniel Dubois' dad has the unleashed shtick on Dan. He just tells him, go, go get it, and he go get it. He don't, he don't do, he ain't with the thinking. Yeah, he ain't with the, you don't need to be with the thinking. You need to be able to fight. That's what you need to be able to do. Sitting there contemplating about monarchy, like John Stewart said, or Big Meech. That's what women be doing. Women be thinking about powerful men. Oops, right? That's what women's supposed to do. Women are supposed to sit there strumming themselves over famous slash historical men. But a, man, a real man, he just go get it. He go get his. And Danny D out here going and getting his own legacy. I want to find that, see if we can see a part where if I can just show you Jet Li being unleashed. That, that specific point when the, guy, when the mafia guy does something. He does some sort of whistle or something like that. It might be a whistle, you know. It might be a whistle when it starts kicking off. Look, so you can see here, or is it the, it might be the neck, the neck brace actually. They either take the neck brakes on or put it off. What, which one, what happens? How does it start kicking off? I'm not even sure. Yeah, it must be that. It's the neck brace. So Jet Li can't fight for Toffee. Jet Li is essentially Anthony, sorry, orderly Anthony Harrisonua. When that neck brace is on, <laughs> when that neck brace is on, <laughs> where is it? I missed it now. Look, look, people, listen. When that neck brace is on, Jet Li is like orderly Thony Harris on you. He can't fight for Toffee. But the minute you take it off, he turns into Maximus Danelius de Bois Stronema. That's what he does. He just look at the strangle. Whoop. Bosh. Bosh. Yeah, that's what you're looking to do. Watch that film. Seriously. That will put you in good stead. Two twos. Let's watch some more of this, of this corner. You can't do with your job. Fame. Fame and then double Fame jab him. Yeah. You listening? When you're stepping... Did you, see, did you see Dan then? He's like... <laughs> I swear that. I need to be able to... I need to be able to... Um, why is his Instagram so dead for, man? Why can't I fall? Fast forward. There was a... Oh. Oh, yeah, you was getting hit. Because you were stepping around the ring, not being threatening. You were just galloping around the ring. He'll rush in if you do that. If you're galloping around the ring and he's rushing in, be ready to drop and smother a tyre. Yeah, he tuck your chin down, double jab him, then bring that right hand, you see. Good advice from um, Don Charles. Tuck your chin down. Keep your hands up, man. But it sounds, everyone laughs about it, but it sounds basic. But that is one thing you can always do. You can't always slip the jab and drop back and bash the right hand. You can't always do that. Those are magic tricks. They're not sustainable slash replicatable. Yeah? They're not. They're party tricks. You may get off once in your career against a wrestler, a 40-year-old wrestler called Mbongo. But Ben Davison don't understand that. He don't, Ben Davison's a fairy coach. Yeah, he's, he, he look good. He sound good. But the practicality of it is ridiculous. 
You can't do with your jab, Daniel. You can't do with it. Hey, hey. You've got to be ready when you break your back. Was that, was that AJ saying to Dan, well done? I feel, honestly, I feel sorry for AJ. Again, if I could change lives with AJ, I would. So it's not, it's not like a, what's the word? It's not like I'm sitting here, like I'm doing really good myself, but I do feel sorry for him. Because he's lost, man. He's got, he don't know whether he's coming or going. He don't know, he don't know what's going on. He doesn't know, he doesn't have the base, I don't believe. And we often see this, and it's unfortunate that he's in the fight game. It's one thing having, if you're in the movie business and someone, everyone's sucking you off because you're the big star, it's one thing. But the fight game, there's nowhere to hide. Yeah? You can't just go to Harvey Weinstein's hotel room to read a script and then get onto a big TV show, right? The fight game is, you still have to fight. <laughs> you can st People, you can go to Turkey's hotel room all you want. If he hasn't fixed Daniel Dubois air conditioning up, rigged it up with some moody chemicals to come out. So Daniel Dubois is bugging. You still got to fight Daniel Dubois. There's nowhere to hide. Yeah. And that's what I think we're seeing with AJ. He, uh, he, I don't know. He doesn't know who he wants to be, whether it's a gangster, whether it's a hard man, whether it's a road man, whether it's a humble man, whether it's Nelson Mandela, kids man. He doesn't know. So he's all over the place. One minute he's saying Dubois shit. Next minute he's congratulating him, well done. Next minute he's showing him into his chair, sticking his tongue out. It's like, this guy's serious. He might have multiple personalities. Well, put it this way. If he didn't have multiple personalities, by the time Maximus Danelli has finished with him, he's got a split reality right now. He's seeing all different things going on. <laughs> he thinks he's Big Meech, Nelson, Gandhi Mandela. <laughs> he, thinks he lost his head, man. Danny D punched the head off this cat. That's what happened. Nothing to do with me, in my opinion. It's not my bias he's coming in. He got punched up. He lost his mind. He's all over the place. Even within, what, the fight was 15 minutes? He's cutting between the bar's shit to uh, to well done to do you know what I'm saying it's a bit icky I feel bad for this guy he's finished very indecisive you're throwing the right hand but it's getting underneath it what did he say I exactly oh my uppercut him I think I've got a video coming soon maybe even today Eddie Hearn sucking off Ben Davison you just heard it there yeah, Ben Davidson's sitting there telling AJ, oh, yeah, you're not looking good, mate. We've talked about this. What's the answer? AJ says uppercut. And Ben's like, yeah, exactly. I can fix that music problem for you. What, with a step back, moody lead, backhanded uppercut, Ben? That's what you could, that was your big solve to knock Usyk out, you clown. Right? And even to this day, Eddie Hearn even came out saying it was AJ's fault. It wasn't Ben Davison's fault. And we have empirical evidence it was Ben Davison's fault. We've seen AJ with every other trainer. This is the worst he's looked. Just because he stepped back and hit him Bongo, who can't box for Toffee, he was get, he was scared to death of Wallen. Now, AJ being scared to death isn't Ben Davison's fault. He's been scared of Usyk, he's been scared of Franklin, so he's been scared with all of his trainers, but at least he had a boxing base then. His chin was more down, his hands were more narrow and up. Now he's loose as a goose, fronting like his name is Prince Ahmad Nassim Hamed, when it's not, your name is, what, realistically, AJ boxes, watch people, listen to me now, watch Audley Harrison versus David Hay. That is how AJ boxes. Even with Wallen, he's like, <laughs> he's scared. <laughs> he's finished, man. He's finished. He just is finished. <laughs> and I'm disappointed that it's taking me this long to. I haven't been saying. I haven't been saying it until recently because he's now finished. You can forget about it. He people, the Ruiz, Mister Blobby broke him. He couldn't come back and put it on Mr. Blobby like Jerome Miller did. Jerome Miller slapped him all over the place. No respect. That shows you what you do to Ruiz. Ruiz ain't good like that. He's no good as well in that sense. He's not top level. He can't punch. Miller didn't... I didn't see Miller go backwards once. That shows you the level of Andy Ruiz. 
AJ made Andy Ruiz look like a 1983 cat skills Mike Tyson with Custy Amato in the corner. That's how AJ made Andy Ruiz look. So stop playing. Um, what was the point I was making? I completely forgot now, to be honest. What was I going to say? Listen, Ben Davidson's no good. Let's just leave it there, shall we? He's no good. He cannot beat you, yeah? It's your time. Right, keep on that jab, yeah? So, <laughs> so annoying, really. They don't give us the... The full corner only footage of each guy, just the bits they've highlighted. So you hear Danny D say, There, relax. Um, you could argue it's probably a bit rude to be honest. Danny D's always looking for his dad, and his dad even said, Don't look at me. I think Dubois' dad's smart enough to understand he doesn't want to end up on the highlight reel like John Fury, like you know what I'm saying. He's obviously heard the criticism that he's too involved and. He wants to put his two pennies in at the same time. He doesn't want to be the... If he did go left, right? If that right hand had knocked Dubois out, we don't... Oh, look. History is made by the victors. If Dubois had a lost, right? We'd have all been... It would have been... Dubois's corner that was on the screen. And we'd all be saying, Wow, this Don Charles... Um, Daniel Bois' dad's talking over John, Ta John Don Charles and Dubois isn't focused on Don Charles he's focused on his dad so it's, you have to be careful here um, and the bottom line is I think Don Charles is a good addition to Dubois' camp but you only need you only really need Dubois' dad in the corner that's what he needs Dubois' dad is like unleashed Jet Li that's the kind of thing they've got going on there he says, don't look at me, go get him. And Dan goes, <laughs> It's raw, anabolic, organic, testosterone. Do you understand, people? That's what I heard there. <laughs> it's wild. Different moments like this. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I just can't take neither of these too serious. I don't, I don't believe it. I don't. AJ in the press conference and all of you, a lot of you AJ sexuals, which who have disappeared, by the way, you man are nowhere to be found. My comment section was full of people. Oh, IB, I'm telling you, bro. You've lost every bet. I'm telling you. Oops. You man, all the man who knew and was telling me they're missing right now. They're, they're literally missing. I don't know where they, they were able to disappear to. Um, but... Again, I'm on my mind, man. These Kabbalah I keep zapping my way, my trail of thought here. I keep zapping it. I might be the vape. I've quit the vape, you see. I've quit the vape and the lack of nicotine. I was sucking that thing all morning, all night, all morning, all afternoon. And I come off the vape here, and my mind ain't working. It's slow. I'm feeling like Joe Joyce. That's how I feel right now. I feel like Joe, I know how Joe Joyce feels. Imagine trying to box when you're thinking like this. I'm like, <laughs> come on now, people. What was I talking about? That's pissed me off. Oh yeah, we're talking about Dubois' corner and the victors. The fact that um, oh, I can't take these guys serious. That was it. I can't take these guys serious. Ben Davison and AJ are just too corny. This is this whole interaction here is corny. Too too corny. It's posturing. Yeah, we live for moments like this. Someone who really believed that. Wouldn't need to say it. That's again. That's what he thinks he should say. That's how it comes across. For example, the saying is, "Actions speak louder than words." Someone who really lived for this, I'd argue, Dubois showed more evidence that he lives for this. Why? He got his head popped off by Hergovic and came waging in. Didn't get discouraged, and then rolls into the AJ fight and picks up where he left off in the Hergovic fight. After the first round, you hear him saying, <sighs> yeah, that's a man who lived for this. More so than a dude sitting there getting punched up, scared to commit to anything. Even Ben Davison said in this clip, you're looking indecisive with everything. That's what you call, that's what, you, that's what they, people, they don't call him orderly than the Harris Sunua for nothing. Yeah, 
Audley Harrison was finished. That's the bottom line. I don't care how good he is with the kids and how good he is with the Olympic medals. Harrison, Audley Harrison was finished at a certain point. More or less when he turned pro. <laughs> he was finished when it began. And that is what we have here. He's finished. He doesn't want to fight. That's, he's been that way for probably... So yeah, since, since more or less Ruiz. He nicked through. You forget that. It's not like he beat Ruiz and then had a whole bunch of tough fights. He beat Mr. Blobby, 400 pounds, not a lick of training. And then 45-year-old Pulev. Um, and then got punched up by Usyk. And he hasn't really won. He has, when was the last serious fight he won? What, what was the last contender AJ beat? Forget about Wallin. Wallin isn't even in my top 20. It's legitimately. Who's Wallin B? Who has Wallin B to be in anyone's top 10? Who is Wallin B? I need to understand this. I think Eddie Hearn said, yeah, we've got Wallin and Wallin's top 10. I thought you, you're smoking the dark and the light. That's what uh, Eddie Hearn's on. I keep hearing him. Like, Wallin's claim to fame is that he lost to Tyson Fury. That is his claim to fame. Yeah, that's his claim to fame. What else has he done? Oh, Gassiev. He went life and death with Gassiev as well. Okay, well, what Gassiev's pretty good apparently. He's a cruiserweight though. But whatever, man. Listen, Wallin's no good. I'll take that for free. He's no good, and he, he showed that because AJ's finished, and Wallin shit himself. So, you can, if you go in there with AJ and you shit your pants and don't throw a punch, you're no good and useless. You're no good. Most people who fight AJ, they're there for the payday. They're there to sit there and look at his muscles. They're not there to fight. Anyway, people, I think that's the end of the footage. We get through then. 100%. That's what it's about. We get through then. Warrior spirit. 100%. But we got to be smart. Yeah, I am, I am. If Rush stepping in with a jab almost every time, unless you're galloping around, Smith will bring it up. Yeah? Roll the dice. Roll that dice. Bubble in his eyes, bring it up. Is that the start of this round? It'll come up fast. Yeah, so be ready. Smith will bring it up. He'll step in with his jab. He's looking for an uppercut. Yeah, watch out for the uppercut he's looking for, right? Listen, this is your contain. Take it, both hands, okay? Take that, take that. That's what Don Charles said. Don Charles whispered in Danny D's ear and said, Give AJ the diddy. Take that, take that. That's what he wants to do, man. 100%. Take that, take that. That's what he did. Yeah? Danny Dubois gave Anthony John Stewart the diddy. Take that back shots. Chin shots, rather. He was like, take that, take that. Pop, pop. You understand, people? Too big, too strong. Both hands. He coming in both hands. Wading in. Hey, take it, both hands. Use your jab. I also want to play the this part, the part the part I talked about a minute ago. This is the most, the most um, poignant part. Bringing that right hand there, it's wild. I'm getting a good shot. Nice and calm. If you find yourself in a situation where you're hurt, back to the road, the fire guard, he'll chase the head, drop and smother. Right? This one here. So Dubois' dad starts off shouting, great shot. Watch this. Watch Dubois go. And then you hear him as well. He goes. He's like a. He's like. I don't know what. He's like a. He's like a rhino in there, man. Listen, listen, listen. 100%. Shut up. Don't look at me. Yeah. Don't finish the job. Yeah. Don't look at me. Yeah. He can't deal with your job. Fame. Fame. <laughs> <laughs> this is mad people. <laughs> Danny Danny D's pots, man. He put the he put the rhino hex on Daniel, man. Like <laughs> just ravenous. Anyway, people, let me know your thoughts. Shout out to Don Charles. Shout out to the Bois team. They are. This is it, people. Now we've got our new champion. I'm telling you now. I'm, am I saying he'll never lose again? No, I'm not saying that. It's going to be hard, obviously, to be undefeated from any point. It can't be done. Dubois could beat Bacoli. I'd take him beating Bacoli as well. If I'm honest, I would. I'd take him beating Bacoli. He's done more than Bacoli. Bottom line. 
Vicoli goes life and death with Tony Oka people. What do you think Danny D would do with Tony Oka? People say Styles make fights. That all sounds good. But ultimately, the bottom line is, you went life and death with Tony Oka. Danny D would punch Tony Oka, a.k.a. Tony Harris on you uh, up. Because Tony Oka and AJ are the same. The amateur Audley Harrisons. That's what they are. They're no good. They're no good for the pro ranks. Don't want to fight. And Bacoli was in there going life and death. I think he got a split decision or something like that. Let's have a look. So you can't sit there ranting and raving about um, Martin Bacoli. Yeah, he looked good against Gerald Anderson. But Yoka, look. Life and death. 50-50. Could have gone either way. Life and death with Sergey Kuzmin. Now, you could argue, though, he's put weight on. Well, he was already, he was already bulbous. He was 250, then he jumped up to 275. Maybe the extra weights helped him. But either way, you look at it, he's gone life and death with bums. Danny D would never go points with Tony Yoka, so there is questions around Bacoli's punching power. He punches well against bums. Or Marius Wack went eight rounds. In a, again, this fight here was life and death. Against Marius Wack in 2019... Um, Bacoli was losing on one judge's scorecard, people. So you can sit here, we can all rant and rave about Bacoli. He's, Dubois would never go life and death with Marius Wack, if that makes sense. Even four years ago, he had blew Marius Wack's back out, so there are questions with Bacoli. I'd have Dubois beating Bacoli. He's the biggest risk, I'd say, Bacoli and Zhang. But you can beat both of them, though. That would be something to behold. Anyway, people, let me know your thoughts. Smash the like button, subscribe, like with the bell, 100%. I'll do that, but people, stop it.